Hi folks, let's say you're getting along with Fusion 360, you're learning, you've made a part, you've made a separate part, and you wanna machine them, but you wanna machine them or cut them out of one piece of material at the same time, so you wanna cam them up together. What the heck do you do to get them into one file? Let's dive in, welcome to our Fusion Friday. The way I recommend that you do this, we're actually gonna close both of the files. So I'm in a new file now. I'm gonna save it as machining top and bottom, the file names. Click save. So we've got a third file now. So we're gonna put those two parts into this new file. Right click on the first file that we wanna insert and say insert into current design. I'm gonna orbit around and just sort of look at where that's at. That looks fine for now. We'll click OK. I'm gonna right click on the second file, that's called bottom in this case, also insert into current design. Now this one I care more about where it's located. So I'm going to use this coordinate system adjustment here. I can use the arrow to drag left or right. I can use this to drag up or down. I can use the center button to move kind of freehand, if you will. Let's say there's OK. Click OK. This is really cool because what I've got now is a new file that has these two components. But see the chain or the link right here? That means these files are still referenced from the original top and bottom. So if these are part of an assembly or part of another design, it's great because those changes that we make in there will flow through here. I'll show you that at the end of the video. For now, let's show what we came for, which is to hop into cam. I'll do a new setup. Really important here, I want to make sure under model that we've got both bodies selected. If you're uncertain, or you say you've got more bodies and you only want to focus on two, you can click this X and I'll click again to reselect one and then two. We've got the Z pointed in the wrong direction. The Z should be pointed up toward the sky or more importantly towards our spindle. So I'm going to change the orientation to select Z axis, this first option here. I'll click on a plane or face that is perpendicular to, fancy way of doing that. And let's go to stock. Let's say this, for this example, let's say we're gonna plasma or water jet these out. Under setup, I'm actually gonna change operation type from milling to cutting, cutting being for water jet laser plasma. Under stock, let's say it's a big sheet. I'll say fixed size box. Uh, 48 by 48, you know, let's say it's a huge sheet. And let's say, well, I want these things to be in the bottom left corner. I'll change model position offset from left. And uh, let's see here, yeah, model position, the Y offset from backside. Didn't move, because I gotta change these to say 0.125 and the offset in Y to be 0.125. So I didn't want the back offset from front. There we go. So now those things are in the bottom left corner. Where do we want our coordinate system? Well, if we're doing a four by four foot plate, we probably aren't finding the center. We're probably finding the corner. So I'll go back to the first tab here, setup, and I'll choose stock point. I'll click this box point and zoom in. And now that lets me pick the top left corner of my stock. Click OK. If we are doing a water jet or laser plasma, we can click cutting. I'll pick a cutter real quick. Let's say it's plasma. You can start picking your geometry. I mean, the rest of this is, is super easy at this point. No one is worried about that. Now, if you're watching this, you're thinking, well, John, come on, I wanna machine these. That's a little trickier than for camp strategy. There's two ways uh, I would machine these. It depends on how many you're making, but if I had to just make a couple of them, I would, you, the problem is it's a two op part either way. It depends on what the stock is you've got on hand. Uh, if I've got, let's take a look at what these, the thickness of these things are. If I go to uh, relative size box, you know, their height, okay, so it looks like they're probably a quarter inch. If we do no additional stock. Yeah, so I may have a bunch of quarter inch stock laying around, which means I don't want to do a strategy where I say cut them with uh, three eighths or half inch stock, you know, holding on with a vise 
uh, underneath here with extra material cut over all the way around them and then flip them over and deck them off. Uh, the benefit to that strategy is you can do all of your cutting, both the outside perimeter profile and the ID holes in one setup, which can increase accuracy. The downside is I would probably have to cut soft jaws to when I flip these to cut the backside because you've got a straight edge here, but you've got this rounded section here. So what we'll say is, let's say you've only got quarter inch stock what I would do on the first op is poke all of my holes through here. In fact, we did a video card here where we made some link bars for the repeater meter where we did the same thing. Basically, we're gonna drill and mill the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ID holes, Let's move over to a fixture that has these three holes in it to locate off of. We've got a screw hole here in the middle we can use to clamp down and then go ahead and machine around the outside. Like I said though, one of the really cool things about this strategy is parametric back to the original file. So let's say we need to change the top file. Open that up. Let's say we want to delete uh, one of these holes. See if that works. That deleted a hole and then let's just say for some reason hit E for extrude. Click on this Mm, nope, that's not what I want to click. Okay, click on, there we go. Some odd reason we wanted to kind of pull this out a little. Click OK. Save it. Close it. And now you might say, well, what the heck? Why is this not any different? Well, take a look. You've got some exclamation points here. It says the component is out of reference. A little bit of an oddity here. You can't update it from the CAM environment. So click the drop down, hop back to model. Now we get a warning at the top. Click that once, give it a second, and it will update our model. Just like so. Two last tricks. One is that if you want to lock these design, this design down so that it isn't linked back to the original files, just simply right click on the component and choose break link. The other good tip is let's say you're trying to do some creative patterning or layout and you want to move this up a little bit to the top right, but you want to move it precisely following that axis. Take a look. I'm going to undo what I just did by clicking revert so it's back to its original place. Right click, move, it's the move copy command. Change your move object to components. I'm going to select the component, and when I select it, I haven't clicked anything yet, I'm going to click right here. Notice how that gives me an arrow in line with where I'm trying to move it. I can now drag it in a precise numerical increment, say 5 eighths of an inch up, and that moved it again along that axis. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.